The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Rolf Geiling, and Rolf is the president of the Santa Barbara Rescue Mission. Welcome, Rolf. Good to be here, Cinder. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Now you have, uh, in addition to all your really good work that you do there, you mm. also have a big building project that's, yeah. that's going on. So we'd love to hear yeah. all about that. Well, it's an exciting season. You know, the rescue mission has been in Santa Barbara for uh, 52 years. And it's only here because decades ago, there were people who we remember very few of them, but they had the foresight to think about that there needed to be a place in Santa Barbara where people who were struggling with homelessness and addiction could turn. And uh, it's, you know, what our board and donors are making sure right now is that 30, 40 years from now, there's going to be a place uh, mm. in Santa Barbara where people can come for help. Oh. So it's a real noble, inspiring project to be involved in. That is so great. Mm. And so you've you've uh, been at the building project for a while. Yeah. I know when we drive by your place, we can see. Yeah, you can see there's a few things happening. going on. Huh? Yeah. 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 No, it's it's uh, um, you know we we were struck with a really uh, you know a challenge. You know when we looked back, conservatively. Uh, you know, since 1986, when our building was built, it's provided over 3 million meals and 1.7 million <laughs> nights of shelter. And so, like we say, you know, if you had 200 house guests a night for 30 <laughs> years, you'd probably need to pay some attention to your facility. <laughs> yeah, and so, I would think so. so, you know, just from general upkeep, all the major systems need um, upgrading. And of course, um, there's been two earthquakes in California since we built the building. So, oh, all gosh. the seismic structural uh, upgrades needed to happen, plus making it accessible for uh, for guests so that people who truly have very specific needs as far as accessibility can mm -hmm, come into mm -hmm. our facility. So it's a big project, and then we have the added challenge of trying to remodel the building while there are people still in it. So that's been uh, right. been quite an undertaking for us. Gosh, now how long do you, how much longer do you think that'll take? Well, the total span of the project is, is uh, about 17 months, we're running on a tight, kind of a two-phase timeline, so mm -hmm. we are good doing about two-thirds of the surface area first, and uh, then we'll turn around, and when we get that done, we're gonna do the last third of the building, which is probably the more intense stack with a lot of mechanical kitchen, bathroom, uh, things in it, but uh, our staff is working really hard because we just understand the fact that we can't, uh, you can't simply suspend services for that amount of time, right. and so we've had to, We've had to decrease our program counts, but we're really trying to focus our efforts on people in the community who are truly vulnerable and uh, mm -hmm. are, you know, trying to avoid a crisis for people in those situations. So, okay, I want to come back to the building in a minute, yep. but let's talk about the services that you provide on a regular basis. Uh, sure. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Well, we are the only place between San Maria and Ventura right now uh, where you can find walk-in shelter 365 days a year. Uh, our shelter program is an important uh, part of what we do because um, if you look at the homeless population, the inmate population, it is a population that is marked by crisis and trauma. And unfortunately, people can't predict when certain circumstances are going to befall sure. them or what state they'll be in. And within all the different efforts we have within Santa Barbara to help people, we have remarkable services, but we um, need to have a place where there's simply an on-ramp where somebody can walk in where the sheriff can bring somebody mm. or cottage hospital can wow. bring somebody who where life is just falling apart and so we we remain committed to doing that to uh, offering no uh, no questions asked shelter as an on-ramp to transition people uh, into more stability in the community and then the second area that we emphasize is drug and alcohol recovery and that's actually where we spend 70 percent or more of our resources on providing long-term drug and alcohol recovery because mm -hmm. 
the population of uh, people that we work with, just uh, addiction, substance abuse, uh, is one of the primary presenting causes. And so we found if we really want to make a significant impact, it's to take this one area and really focus and make sure that people with such acute needs get the best, most comprehensive care they can. And so we bring uh, 45 men and women into our facility and we provide a 12-month drug and alcohol treatment program that sees them hopefully on the road to recovery from their addictions. So 45, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a year-long resident. They live there. Correct. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think I have heard they also kind of work. They contribute by working, like in the kitchen. And well, things, exactly. Right? Yeah. Everybody who comes into our program. I mean, we we it costs us about twenty five thousand dollars to bring somebody through a year of treatment, but we extend that to them regardless of their ability to pay. And frankly, if you're in our target population you probably can't afford to pay. I mean, mm -hmm. Most people are coming to us, uh, you know, I'd say 40 to 50 percent come out of the criminal justice system um, or have come out of decades of addiction. And yes. so, um, but there's really no, arguably no population that needs treatment uh, more desperately than people. And we, yes. we're so grateful for donors who say, you know, we're gonna make this available to people uh, uh, regardless of their ability to pay. And so, Part of the reason we're able to keep the cost somewhat manageable is that uh, as part of the recovery program, every one of our men and women has some kind of a job responsibility okay. so that facilities maintenance, uh, upkeep janitorial kitchen, uh, and then also helping facilitate our homeless outreach is all done by program clients. And that you know serves a very basic logistical need, but it also really is part of people's yeah. recovery program. Oh, if you're yeah, dealing I with issues of a lack of self-worth, mm -hmm. to be able to contribute really helps people. Yeah. So f for the ones, um, the program where people can just walk in, right. how many can you accommodate in, in a given night? In a full, uh, you know, the full shelter, we can occupy um, uh, 30 women um, when we're at full operation. And when we get mm -hmm. back to having the facility ready, we'll oh, take 30 okay, women sure. and probably around 80 to 90 men. Golly. Um, and yeah, so that's a, that's a, we, we bring people in, um, Typically what we try to do is, first of all, we believe real strongly as people of faith to extend grace to somebody in need. And so if you just need a place to stay, we do that. But then as people, uh, should people need more extensive services if their stay is more than a few mm -hmm. days, that's where we start to uh, work out individualized treatment oh, plans and objectives good. for them so that somebody, you know, so that we're not just creating, you know, enabling situation, but we're actually helping somebody take steps toward being reintegrated into our community. Great. And so taking steps to yeah. reintegrate. So um, do you help people find jobs, put together resumes, uh, find housing? I mean, how within the, within, um, certainly within the, with our program clients who are with us for a year, that's a very intensive process yeah. where okay, yeah, okay. people get a lot of vocational and educational support. Uh, for clients coming into the shelter program, what we've realized is we really need to be ready to receive a diverse group of uh, just a diverse population. So we try to keep the program somewhat flexible. There are people who may just find themselves in a tough situation. They lost their job and they they probably have the resources or the, just the tools to get back mm -hmm. on their feet and they really just need a place to stabilize. And what our staff will do is just check in and we'll see how their job search is going. and. Yeah. Um, and just there are very subtle indicators we look for as to whether or not somebody's really taking initiative or whether they've become complacent. Um, some of our guests are coming in right now. What we've seen in the homeless population in Santa Barbara is not necessarily a numeric growth, but just a rise in the level of acuity in terms of what people are afflicted with as far really? as mental illness, um, age. Uh, the average age of a woman in our shelter is 59 years old. Mm. and. So we're dealing with a lot of things like chronic health conditions, uh, dementia, yeah. mental illness, and, Gee, and there it's more incumbent upon us as a community to figure out, okay, we're not gonna take a woman who's in her 60s and dealing with dementia and somehow talk about vocational rehab, but we have to look at, <laughs> right. what we have to look at is say, how can we as a community surround this person with the care they need? How yeah. can we get the agency community uh, mobilized to create a place where this person can receive the care they need. So sometimes the steps are, you know, as simple as an individual being willing to be helped, but then what we have to do is be able to turn around and work with other partner agencies and community oh, and organizations course. to say, okay, how are we going to help this person? Uh, because 
it's, you know, it's tragic that they're on the street, and frankly, it's not acceptable that they're living in a shelter. We want to move them past yeah. that. So lots of collaboration. You it's, yeah, it's, it, it is. I mean, within, within the homeless community, um, there are so many different organizations. I remember at one point, uh, one of our colleagues from another organization gave a case study and it talked about to move somebody from uh, being on the street um, into stability housing employment, it probably, there's probably no one organization that can take somebody down that whole process. Gotcha. Yeah. It usually takes a good, successful collaboration from about eight organizations uh, yeah. to get somebody there. So that's, wow. yeah, it's very important we communicate. And what's encouraging is that in Santa Barbara, we're actually a, a, a sizable, it's, it's a small enough community and that we can work well together mm -hmm. and we have the resources to, that we can really focus on people if we work well together. So, you know, what I hear is you're really creating a, a caring, supportive environment mm -hmm. and then tailoring the program to each person's needs. That, that would be our hope for sure yeah. Um, because, yeah, it's just, when, especially when you look at the homeless population, there is such a diverse uh, level yeah. of needs and it's very hard to envision one program I mean, what we can do is maybe we can focus on certain aspects of the population like we do with drug and alcohol treatment, sure. but, but on the other hand, we need to, need to be broad and, and willing yeah. to accommodate just a large number of, right. of challenges that come with working in this field. Gosh. So um, let's go back to the building. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, I would imagine in order to pay for it, you're probably uh, having a capital campaign, are you? Uh, yes, we are, quite <laughs> a bit, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it will take... Um, Probably f for what's required to fix the building, why it's going to take about ten million dollars, um, just a little over that. Okay. Um, and that's that is a significant sum. But if we look at the fact that it's a forty thousand square foot facility, remodel costs work out to about two hundred fifty dollars a square foot. Which, if we look at the fact, a lot of what we're doing in the remodel is addressing very um, uh, very complex systems. Uh, a bathroom, you know, many bathrooms. I mean, for for the last, oh, 15 years in our shelter, we basically had six showers uh, for all of our clients. As many as 120 oh men and women gosh. need to shower in six Holy showers every God. night. Gee whiz. And so even just getting the, the infrastructure to really handle people so that we're not so overburdened by logistics every night. And the other thing that, that, that really that facility is, is, it's really a reflection on our community and the value that we place on people and really what, you know, our compassion is signified by the facility that we prepare for people who are in yes, need. So, that, so yeah, that's, that's so it we really we really uh, uh, would be well served to deal with this problem if we're able to just put a facility uh, in the community that is going to be able to stand the test of time yes. and will do so in an efficient, effective manner. And so. You are a nonprofit, 501c3, yes, with a are. website, right? Yeah, we are. And I'll bet on your website there's a Donate Now button. Yeah, there's a Donate Now. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the website's sbrm.org, okay. Santa Barbara Rescue Mission, just mm -hmm. the first letters. And uh, there's all kinds of information on the website. Uh, the nice thing about it is we are a very central location along yes. the 101 freeway, yeah. a very easy stop as people come by. We, mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, it's, there's, always exciting things going on, especially around holidays. We love to have people in the community mm -hmm. come and take a look oh, and yes, contact yes, us. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Gosh. Well, Rolf, you are just, you are such an inspiration. Well, thank you. The Thanks. work you're doing and mm -hmm. now the building project. And mm -hmm. I know that there are many, many people who are really eager to donate to that. And uh, Well, we hope so. It's been, we've seen a tremendous response from oh, the community. Oh, I'm so glad. And, uh, that's that's exciting to us, but uh, it really is something that right now we have the opportunity really to do something that's uh, very significant. And our hope is that more people will see the value in that and be compelled to join in to be able yes. to look at this facility 30 years from now and say we helped to do that oh. because every every day we don't know who comes in, we don't know who's going to come yeah. in, but it's just very inspiring to think that there are people uh, who we may never meet who yeah. could be impacted by by the steps that we take yeah. right now as a community. That's quite a vision. Well, Thanks. thank you so much mm -hmm. for being with us and thank you for all of your good, important work that you do. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus and we'll see you next time.